this is AndyTube. This video is about thread clearance on a Singer Model 403A. Now the uh, theory of thread clearance that I'll explain would hold true to just about every vintage Singer sewing machine that I've ever worked on. I can't speak for other brands of machine as I, I don't I don't work on them, but uh, the parts in this video would uh, specifically relate to the slant needle machines 401A, 403A, 404, and the Rocketeer slants um, 500A and 503A. Um, now, uh, I also have done videos on some other parts involved with thread clearance on, on different Singer machines and I'll put links at the uh, end of the video and in the description below to those like the Apollo Bobbin Case thread clearance and a different style of class 66 Bobbin Case where the, the bracket is a little bit different and to check a thread clearance on the machine, I'll just I'll just tell you now the tools involved is you need some some kind of a feeler gauge, something that can measure uh, very thin spaces. Um, these these are one style that have what I call little blades that come in different sizes, and they make different styles of feeler gauge also. These are inexpensive, uh, but uh, oddly enough, this one was like eight dollars, and this was the big one was six. I I don't know, but uh, also if you have to correct the thread clearance or adjust it, you'll need some screwdrivers. So let's talk about thread clearance for a moment. You know, in the machine like this, you have a bobbin case that that holds the class 66 bobbin. And the bobbin case uh, sits on the race, a little shelf on the rotary hook, and, and rests there. And what keeps the bobbin case in place is a bobbin case positioning bracket. Um, that that uh, inserts into the machine is held in place and, and can be pulled away from the bobbin case to get the bobbin in and out and then put back and it it holds that bobbin case in place so that it doesn't spin out or fall off when the when the hook is turning okay and the space uh, the thread clearance I usually I usually call it a gap. So if you hear me talking gaps, that's that's the same thing. But it's the it's the primary one is this clearance or gap between this part of the bobbin case, which is called the heel, and this part of the positioning bracket, which is called the spring. This this little uh, piece here does flex a little bit okay and that little space or clearance or gap has to be on this machine uh, somewhere between 0 0.012 and 0 0.014 inches A little space right next to the heel okay and then there's a space on the other side of the spring and then there's a space up here at the top of these two pieces this is called the rear corner of the bobbin case and I sometimes call it the toe and uh, the, the top of the spring or the top of the bracket. So there's kind of three spaces involved or three clearances involved. 
you don't hear too much about this one space up here but um, let me show you how this works and, and why you need a certain clearance there Let's see if I can get this machine over here so when the hook comes around and picks up the needle thread hey check out my new pointer <laughs> when, when the hook comes around and, and and it grabs the needle thread and it drags it around the hook it gets down here towards the six o'clock position and it cast off the thread and then your take up lever pulls it through here and back up and that motion of doing that is to wrap it around the bobbin thread so you get a lock stitch okay and that little space right there has to be big enough for the needle thread to slide through but uh, not too big that the bobbin case uh, is snapping back and forth because as that thread comes around it goes right over the top of the bobbin case so it kind of moves the bob pulls the bobbin case into the spring and bracket and then once the thread is cast off it, it kind of goes back to the left so it's that little sound that you hear is that bobbin case back and forth okay and if you had a real big gap here that would really be going back and forth harder farther and louder and if it was way out you could even have the bobbin case slip off the race which is rare but I've seen it so let's see if I can get this uh, I tried to get some new orange thread here to show up that would show up good but let's see if I can uh, get the hook to grab this orange thread and take it around and cast it off so there it goes down okay my hook has grabbed it can you can you see it coming across here now it's going to drag right over the top of all this and right now whoops my bobbin threads kind of in the way there right there the hook has cast it off and the thread is in the gap it's going into the thread clearance area and this side of the spring the left side we call the heel gap it's the gap between the heel and the spring and mine is not set right mine doesn't have enough space so what's what happens here is the hook keeps going but the thread kind of hangs in that gap for a minute there so it hangs right there I hope you can see this Uh, hook point is under here now and, and the thread on the hook point is way past the cast off area because the thread is kind of stuck or hung up in the thread gap area in the heel gap right there Now, eventually, as the hook travels some more and the take up lever starts, boink, the thread will be pulled through. But that hang can, can put a drag on the take up spring. Remember, we set the stroke and tension 
and the take up lever here is trying to pull it up through and it kind of hangs so what what gives between all these metal parts and the thread is your stitch. It, it has wrapped around the bobbin thread but it's hung up so it's putting extra pressure on it and you get these puckered stitches, right? And if you're sewing zigzag you, you can get uh, uh, the lock stitch can be pulled through the fabric and be showing in the bottom. It can be in the center of the zigzag stitch. So uh, that that's why we want a proper clearance. We want uh, clearance enough for that thread to go through and not get hung up. But we don't want uh, so much that the bobbin case is kind of loose in there. And then okay. let me show you this... Uh, bobbin case positioning bracket with with this uh, parts identified there's the clamping arm the stabilizing arm the adjustment screws for the spring the actual uh, cushion spring it's called and this little part in the center here see right there that's called the the spring stop so it wants to cushion that bobbin case a little bit as it comes slamming over but it doesn't want to let it go too far and come off the the race of the hook so take a look at this Okay, so now now we know all the parts, right? And now now we understand the th the theory of uh, thread clearance here. So how we go about uh, working on this or looking at it is we want to get our we want to get our needle off and our uh, needle plate. There we go. And uh, I'm saving this thread because it was expensive. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go ahead and take just take the foot off, the presser foot off there. And I'm going to uh, turn my hand wheel until my take up lever gets low, which, which, uh, also, what I'm really looking at is that the feed dog gets to its lowest position. See how it's up high? And I, I want it to be down low. Okay. Then I can, I can use my throat plate positioning bracket to lift that plate up and slide it right off. Okay. Then I'll remove the the bobbin here too with the with the thread and finally I'm going to remove the slide plate by pushing it forward lifting up the back end a little bit over the bracket pins and just pushing it right off all right now we've got a little bit better uh, See, can I tilt this? I'll tilt this thing up a little. Oh, there. Okay. Not the best lighting, huh? Even though I have three big LED lights now, it still it still struggles a little bit to have lighting. Let's see if I can move my old portable lamp over here. Get a little bit more lighting on there. Okay, so we we're talking about this uh, space right between here. Right between the heel of the bobbin case and the spring on this side. And then between the spring and the spring stop on this side. And for, for the 400 class machines, 401, 3, and 4, um, it's interesting because the, the service manual has a word description and a picture. 
And in the word description, it says that this gap on both sides of the spring is uh, has a range of 0 0.012 to 0 0.014 inch, which would be 0 0.30 to 0.35 millimeters on both sides, equal amount. But if you look at the picture, the picture says between 0 0.012 and 0 0.016 inches, which would make it 0 0.30 millimeter to 0 0.40 millimeter. That's odd. Now, if you look at the Rocketeer, the 500A and 503 service manual, it has the same picture showing 0.012 to 0.016, but the, the, the word description also says 0.012 to 0.016. Now, I have found on most of the 400 slants that... Um, I try and get closer to the point zero one two. Seems to give me enough clearance for the thread to go through and the shortest amount of the bobbin moving back and forth. But I'm going to put in a disclaimer here that just about every machine is a little different. I once restored two Model 404s in the same week. And one was set at 13, and the other I had to set at 15 to get the best stitch. So, I'm, I'm not sure why that is, if it's just a wear, or maybe the spring was bent a little bit, you know? But, um, either way, just be aware, uh, 0 0.012 to 0 0.014 works um, on the 400 with getting to closer to 0 0.012 maybe 0 0.013 and on the Rocketeer 500A and 503's my setting was usually closer to the 0 0.014 or a little bit over so to measure this you, you, you find that blade or gauge on the feeler gauge and uh, like on my little one here that's good for getting into these parts I don't have a 0 0.012 I have a 0 0.013 and a 0 0.015 and on my bigger gauge I have um, the 0 um, uh, where is that here? I have the one, two, one, three, one, four. I have more blades on the bigger one. But I'm going to take the the point zero one three on this little one. So I'm going to use this uh, point zero one three inch, which is point three three zero millimeter. See how thin these are. Whee. And the idea is that you measure this space between the spring and the right side of the spring and the stop by gently putting that in there. And, and I don't know, the best way to describe this is that when you have the right size, you're going to feel a little drag on both sides. And it's going to be perfectly straight, you know. You don't want it twisted. If you hold it, I guess, parallel or, you know, right between the two things you're measuring and not twisted, that you want to feel some drag on that um, blade. And this, I can wiggle it a little bit. So this side, on the right side, seems bigger than... The 0 0.013 and I'm supposed to have that same measurement 
on the left side of the spring between the heel and the spring and when I go over there I can't even get I can't even get the blade to go in over here it's so close together it won't go in now I could force it in by pushing the spring back but when you're measuring and you have something like a spring you you want to feel the drag from the two parts but you don't want it to flex that spring at all because that means that you, you have less than your measurement and you're only making it work by flexing the spring so on the heel side my my clearance or gap is too narrow and on the spring stop side or the bracket side of the spring my my clearance or gap is too big okay yikes okay I'm going to try and get another light now because I want to talk about this rear corner up here at the top of the gap. And it's not showing up well on my camera, so let me see if I can get another light. light. Okay, maybe. So, up here between the bracket and the rear... Mm, they didn't call it the heel, they just called it the rear corner of the bobbin case. Right up here, see if I can get that feed dog back a little bit. This is supposed to be, uh, in the word description, they call it 360 fourths of an inch which would be 1.19 millimeter but in the picture diagram they say it's supposed to be between 0 0.025 and 0 0.045 inch which is a big difference and that would be 0 0.58 to 0 0.63 millimeter so it's a lot bigger space up here okay and I often don't have to let me change that I seldom have to to make any adjustment up there because it's such a big range that it something usually falls in there so what what I am gonna do is I have my 0 0.1017 and 0 0.018 which would give me a 0 0.035 which is right in the middle of that uh, spacing and I'm going to go in there and measure that and that goes in very easily with some room left over so let me change this so with this meter I, I can either measure 0 0.042 or 0 0.046 which is over the 0 0.045 so I'm going to measure, I'm going to use the 0.22 and the 0.20 to measure 0 0.42. Get up there and gently put it in there. And it really, it really doesn't want to go in without kind of, well, let me pull that back. Oh, see, because these are screwed down, they're spread a little. Um, I think it's my point is let's see can I get these together here now I think it's less than the 0.45 which would be the max yeah that just kind of barely slips in there so it's just barely bigger than the 0 0.42 which would be the uh, wide range so for now I'm going to leave that there and not worry about adjusting that but I do want to adjust this this stuff around the spring right so I need to loosen these two adjusting screws here to be able to change that Let's see if I can go in 
with my little Chapman knob here and get in there if I got the right tip yeah there we go these are in here pretty firm because the and you want them to be because the uh, bobbin case is bouncing against this bracket on every stitch you know <laughs> so it's got to be held in place pretty strong let's see now it's loose so I can adjust it can you see that it's moving now okay So I'll go back on my gauge to the uh, 0.013, which is kind of the median point for that space. And oh yeah, see it's it's much bigger even than it was before. So what I've got to try and do is hold that feeler gauge in there. And I want to uh, tighten my screw up when I get that space. Let's see if I can look around the camera and get this with this little longer screwdriver just snugged up good. Just the bottom one. And then test this. Still a little too big. I must have been holding this a little crooked. So I'm still, it's still, it's still too wide. So let's get it down here, loosen it a little bit again. Get it over. Got to loosen it a little bit more to move it. And remember, I want to be able to get the gauge in there and feel some drag on it, but I don't want it to be flexing that spring. That feels better. Let's try that snug up. Oh, that feels real good. I got the drag on the blade, but I'm not making the spring flex. So I would say I have this good now. I have a better correct space on this side. Uh, might as well go up to the top and make sure that I didn't mess this up because with both of these loose, you know, the bracket can move around. Zero point two five. Right, oh. So where was my, here's my 42 total would be towards the higher end of that limit. I think I did move that a little bit. So let me go down here. See if I can get closer to 3.5 which would be 0 .017 plus 0 .018. And that would kind of be in the middle of that range which would seem like it would be okay for me. Let's try that. Those two blades. Nice. It's a little bit bigger than that. So I'm less than 0 0.042 and more than 0 0.035. So I'll take it. So I'm going to snug this one up so I don't lose that. And then I'm just going to come back down because I know sometimes when you when you move 
a part like that at the top, I might have changed the bottom setting. I hope I didn't because I already snugged up the screw. But I'm just going to see if my .013 holds there. Very nice. Just a little bit of drag. No spring flex. Okay. So, let me tighten these up securely then so that that does not change. Mm. Let's double check that one. When I went to work on this, I saw some scratches on these screws, so I know somebody had worked on it before. Okay, nice and firm. Good. Now my other side is still so close, I, I can't even get the, the blade in there. So the way that you adjust this now is different. Because this, between the, the heel of the bobbin case and the spring, you have to adjust the whole bracket. And the way that you do that is right here is an eccentric stud, an off-center stud that you turn to, to widen or narrow the clearance over here. But since it's a stud, you know it has to have a set screw that holds it in place once you adjust it. So before I can adjust it, I need to loosen the set screw. And that's going to be under the edge of the bed at the front down here. This is the set screw for the spring of the side plate that holds it in. Or it's really just a screw. But the set screw is in the center of this. Okay. So I'm going to go in here and lefty loosey that set screw about a full turn so now I can manipulate the eccentric stud adjustment see if I can prop this back up here oh okay <laughs> we got all kinds of lights here and I don't know how much that's helping Yeah, it looks it looks in my back of my camera like it's helping. Okay, so I got I have I have that set screw done. So when I turn this now, this the space between the bobbin heel and the spring is going to change. And let's see how it changes. If I turn to the right, it moves closer to the bobbin case. Is that is that correct? Whoa, maybe I didn't loosen that set screw enough. It doesn't want to turn. There it goes. There it goes. So if I, yeah, if I turn the screw towards the left, it's pulling the bracket away. And if I turn it towards the right, it's pushing the bracket towards the bobbin case. I have it turned all the way right. And look, that bobbin case won't even move. <laughs> Might even be hard to sew with it there. So if I hold the bobbin case and turn this screw away all the way to the left, now I have a very large gap in there. Okay. So I'm shooting for somewhere between 12, 13, 14. I'm going to put my 14 in there. 
and I'm just going to try and uh, turn that eccentric stud until I get over and it touches this blade. I got it a little too far. Okay, now I'm getting drag on it. A nice little bit of drag. And I gotta lean. I gotta get close to see. Am I making that that uh, spring flex? The bobbin case can move away. That's okay. I got a little too tight because I can I can see to get it in there. I can see the spring flex. So let me turn it back just a little bit. See the bobbin case will move to the left. That's okay just a little bit I'm turning like in one eighth increments now I'm down to moving the, the stud in about one sixteenth increments so I got a little bit of I got some drag on my blade and I'm trying to hold it straight and I am not moving the spring so I got it where I want it okay and then of course I'm gonna have to go back down here and securely tighten that set screw I should have loosened it just a little bit more when I loosened it but I want to securely tighten it So that eccentric stud doesn't move, and my uh, spacing won't change. So now I've set all three clearances or gaps. I'm going to set my machine back up with the needle and stuff, and I want to see when I come around if that thread still hangs. I don't think it will and I want to show you the difference how before when it came to the cast off area um, and the hook would kind of drop it usually and the thread would sneak between there it was getting kind of hung up there so it didn't fall out of the hook and pretty soon the hook was clear over here and the thread was still <laughs> in the clearance area. So let's see now if I, if all my adjusting made that better. <laughs> okay, so I, I did put my uh, needle plate or throat plate black back on because I want the thread to be properly in the hole of it. I didn't bother to put the presser foot back on or the slide plate because I just want to test the clearance here. So before it, it, it would hang up there let's bring it around here comes the here it's about halfway over the bobbin now right you see that so let's see if it hangs or goes through oh it goes through see that's what you want just like that so it comes around and it goes through that um, whoops get my thread tangled up here it goes through that uh, thread clearance gap between the bobbin case heel and the spring, boom, right through. Boom. Great. So it's not going to get hung there and make weird uh, stitching. And it's got enough gap to get through there, but not too much so it won't be overly loud. You know, mechanical machines like this are a little bit noisy anyway. But, but at least now I have it set a lot better than it was so it is not hanging up so that is about thread clearance uh, around the bobbin case and the bobbin case bracket and like I said uh, the Apollo hook is similar it has just a different bracket and on some of the machines like uh, I, I don't know 337 or 457 those those 418 they use this class 66 but the, the the bracket might be a little bit different is all but the whole theory that you you need um, 
thread clearance for that needle thread when the hook drops it off it can sneak through to wrap around the bobbin thread and make the lock stitch and you see it's pretty easy to do right and again you can you can buy these I just bought this at the O'Reilly Auto Parts down the street a few years ago matter of fact back then it was checker for you Arizonans that know that but uh, they're not expensive and you just need one of these and a little screwdriver and you can check and or set the clearance your thread clearance okay so you got your heel gap and your stop gap and your rear corner gap and we're good to go thank you I hope that was uh, interesting and uh, you you can easily check for thread hang just by doing what I did right there and if it seems to want to be hanging up there all the time maybe you need to get a feeler gauge and check that okay there we go all set easy to do you can do it you can do that easily and I hope you come back and visit some more and uh, see what else you can do on a Singer Model 403A. Take care now.